What's up everyone, it's Wolfgang back with another Dorkfish review and today we are reviewing the SH Figure Arts MCU Infinity War Original Release Hulk. Let's jump into it. Alright, so I know you're saying Wolfgang, this doesn't look anything like Mark Ruffalo's Hulk from the Avengers movies and you're right. Uh, most figure lines, they go off of sketches um, and kind of the approximate looks, not the finalized look, so that they can get the product out for sale and retail before the films actually drop. So that being said, more than likely, I mean, it looks like they went with a comic base, so more than likely they went off the sketches they had, which were more comic base, and that's why he doesn't quite have the Mark Ruffalo head like the in-game figure would have, where they could go back and take a body that, let's be perfectly honest, in this figure is damn near perfect and just put the right kind of head sculpt on it. So we talk about it being perfect or damn near perfect. In terms of that, we're gonna get into, we're gonna start though with the accessories. So there's not a lot of accessories with this figure. It's just extra parts, extra hands and heads, which I'm okay with. It's a beefy figure. Um, and the set or the extra heads and the uh, hands are really well done. So the first we're gonna look at is you've got two sets of hands, the fisted hands that are already on, come on in the package. And then you have these stylized gripping hands. I probably could have dealt with or been okay with, I would have liked um, some relaxed hands too, but these are really well done. See the veins, see the texture and the sculpt. Uh, a little softer on the nails. I like maybe something a little like dirt or something to define the nails. Even with the camera board, you can see the painting and the line work in the, the chest and the arms or anything. So I liked maybe some of that in the hands, which is something the hands and the feet are sort of lacking paint. But same across, I do like the texturing. I do like the sculpting. I think it's very well done otherwise. So that leaves just the heads to get into. So you have the standard head, which comes in the package, which is probably my favorite next to the screaming head. Um, you have the screaming head, which is very, very well done. Very much so enjoy it. Got all sorts of little, got all the wrinkles and everything in the face, teeth and mouth. Maybe you could have blacked out the back of the mouth or something just to add depth, I'm not sure. You have wonderful hair sculpt. Ears, the brow, just a little bit of paint difference in terms of color. You've got more of a grayish around the side of the head and the, the black on top. The eyes are very well done. Something that can get uh, lost in translation very easily is the eyes. Uh, so there's that head. The next head is this one. Now this is my least favorite. I just don't like the mouth. I mean, I like the rest of it, but just if you look at the rest of the figure, maybe I'm off. I, I like the screaming head because of proportions, but even with the main head, uh, just the distance between the nose and the upper lip. It's fairly, fairly big gap. Either length of his nose just a touch, which you don't have to do, or uh, I don't know, maybe just shift this up. I'm just not a fan of that much upper lip there or the, the section in between. I'm not sure what that's called. But otherwise, the sculpt is fantastic. The colors and paint is on point. And then the last head, of course, we have which is the more neutral head very well done again texturing I mean I love the brow it's, it's very very well done hair sculpt is very good on them so yeah that's all you get with the figure and then of course it's just the figure itself I'm okay with that pretty decent stuff maybe could throw a few things there you know some debris or some something you would hit someone with but most importantly I would like to have had made some relaxed hands uh, but that's really it. Otherwise, there's not too much I could ask to go with the Incredible Hulk since it's the Hulk. So that being said, we're going to jump into aesthetic. So aesthetic-wise, he is very well done. Uh, a lot of detail was put into him in a lot of spots. So if you look at the body, we're going to get up close here. Look at the texturing. Look at the vein work. Look at the detail. I mean, there's some things that are pretty ugly, like the gaps here. Pretty ugly gaps in the back especially once you start bending and articulating not very good but and, and some of the stuff with the shoulder gaps so that's the big thing is the gapping due to articulation this is this is a prime example of the opposite of 
uh, a NECA, where NECA will sacrifice the articulation for the aesthetic. In this case, you see a lot of things aesthetically that aren't quite as pleasing because they made sure the articulation was there. Uh, I'm not super for some of the gaps, but I do enjoy the articulation, so I can forgive this figure. If the articulation was absolute crap, then I would be very pissed. I'd be highly upset with it, but I can't complain too much. So, aesthetically speaking, I mean, the paint job is very well done. I like how they shaded the abs and the chest, uh, the, the arms, the highlight, everything. I wish the neck had had a little more of that shading. I wish the hands and the feet had had that shading as well. It's just something that's missing because it's all here. It's all throughout the back. And then when you get to the rest of the extremities, it's, it's gone. Like you can see how it's even darker here and starts to fade once it gets to form and then just goes away, right? So not a fan of that, but that is what that is. So that being said, we're gonna go into articulation. So articulation, this kind of feeds into what we're talking about. You've got, he's got a double ball joint head and then the neck. So standing straight, the head can look about that far up, that far forward. With the neck, he can look about that far up and pretty far down. So anything or anyone he wants to look at, right? You've got plenty of, you, know, you can turn the head, of course. Plenty of playroom, thanks to the neck and, and stuff. You can wiggle, move them around. So you got plenty of motion there. You've got these butterfly joints. So you can get them into a flex pose, kind of a old school Hulk smash pose right there. Like the old TV show with Bill Bixby and Lou Ferrigno. 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 Anyway, but yeah, you can get some pretty decent poses out of that. Butterfly joint's not bad. This is what we talked about in the back. So see, it's not horrible. There's some gapping, so you have to be careful. You don't want to play it all the way out. But if you do that, it doesn't look too bad. And you still got that forward motion, right? You've got these ball joints that the tops cap over. So no bicep swivel. So your swivel's kind of there. Of course, you can go 60 with it, right? You've got a ball joint, so it's a double ball joint in there. I don't know if you can see that. So you can kind of shift the shoulder as needed, right? Double jointed elbow, not quite, you know, about 90 degrees, which is fine. He's a big bulky character. And then dumbbell wrists, so that you can see them. Dumbbell wrists right there. So just pops right on and off. Boom, so dumbbell wrists for torso. All right, so you have to be careful because you don't want to rub. You can you can rub the figure easily with the articulation. So you can get that far forward on his own. Look at the gap we were talking about in the back. It's, it's not quite as prominent there, still kind of, but not as bad. You can get this far back from the front. Keep in mind, you've got some wild gapping there, so you don't really want to do that, right? Now, you've got also this. So you can move it that far forward. You can get them a hunch going. The problem is, once you've done that, you can see inside of the figure. So you have to be careful what you're articulating it for, the position you're doing. But you combine them together, and you've got him completely bent over. So on the right, you know, maybe cheat a little on the right. Boom, you've got him bending over pretty nicely. Uh, he turns just fine at both joints, so that's not a problem. You know, he wiggles at both joints, all the same, so pretty well done. Then you've got the legs. Take about that far forward. Same thing, you can get some chewing and rubbing in here, so you got to be careful with that. Take about that far forward, about that far outside, so he can basically do the splits. So you can kick a little farther forward. Can't really go back because of the butt. You've got thigh. Double jointed knee gets you about that far, it's not too bad. You've got that far with the ankle back, kind of just forward with the ankle forward, so not much there, and then a toe hinge, and then not bad ankle rocker, all things considering it's not horrible, but not the worst. So, articulation wise, there's some things to be desired, there's some things that I would like changed or would like added. Um, you know, 
got a lot of cuts in a lot of places where I think it's not necessary or I guess just the kind of joints they picked but overall it's not horrible he moves fairly well get some pretty good shots out of him pretty good pictures so who am I to complain all right next is size comparisons and we are going to put him with some figures here such as the MCU Mark Ruffalo build a figure Hulk from Marvel Legends the Marvel Legends Hugh Jackman Wolverine the Marvel Legends release Comic-Con special edition of the Build-A-Figure Abomination. Pretty good comparison size there. Although I think Abomination is a little bigger. I'm not 100%. I'll have to check that back out. I think Abomination is a little bigger than Hulk. And then Venom from the MCU. Some different characters in which he's quite acquainted with. One of them so for a few other lines. Let me get these out the way. For a few other lines, we have the DC Collect and Connect Bane and a NECA Predator. Now, I think the Predator would probably be a little big in this case, I think uh, I think the predators are usually like in around a seven foot range, and the Hulk himself is usually about eight foot. So like this, Bane and Hulk, that absolutely works in my mind. I think that the predators just a little bit. Yeah. So that is size comparisons. All right. So overall, I really enjoy this figure. He's actually one of my favorite in my collection. Um, excellent figure scales perfectly i do love the articulation there's some minor gripes certain gapping certain things that are cut a certain way like the ankles uh the elbow joints but when you get them in some nice poses like this and some different pictures which i'll throw up at the end of this it's the kind of stuff that you definitely do want uh to take pictures with he's the kind of figure you definitely want your collection if you're a huge hulk fan uh, I'm very happy with them, and hopefully this review, if you don't have them, will help you decide if you want them. If you do have them, I hope you enjoy them. Alright guys, I'm going to bring this video to an end. I do hope you've enjoyed the review, and if you do, hit the like, hit the share, and hit the subscribe button, right? I want you to tell everybody about this review if they are asking about this figure, or if you have questions about this figure, I do hope this review has helped you. That being said, I appreciate your time. I'm going to catch you on the next video. Later.